I'm Dave Butfield. These days, fishing is so much more than just soaking your bait in the water. And you may have some questions like, where's the most productive area to go fishing for your target species? When's the best time to catch that species? And of course, what is the best bait to use? Throughout my travels both here in Australia and overseas, I've been very fortunate to wet a line for some pretty amazing species. From Barramundi in India, giant kingfish in New Zealand, and monster brim on the south coast of New South Wales, just to name a few. In that time, I've learnt so many different ways to catch a fish, and now it's my aim to try to pass that information on to you. Or I hook a small one, I'm hooked on fishing again. This week, we've touched down in magnificent Lake Macquarie. The lake covers an area of 110 square kilometres and is Australia's largest coastal saltwater lake. Lake Macquarie is located in the Hunter region of New South Wales and holds a wide range of estuary species, from monster dusky flathead, yellowfin brim, dewfish, whiting and even squid. Jace, I know why I love uh, Lake Macquarie. It's a great fisheries and uh, we'll get some great fish. So Jace, we reckon flathead? I think that's definitely a flathead. Um, and it was pretty responsive onto that lure, Dave. I think you did about two tweaks and that was it. That's right. Now today we want to go for flathead and maybe later in the afternoon do some whiting fishing. So, but uh, hopefully we can get some nice little, well, Lake Macquarie's famous for flathead, isn't it, Jace? Absolutely. and. Um, Nowadays, they've really come back in numbers, and I think they've come back in big numbers, Dave, ever since they brought the limit in of only one over 70. And that's a nice little fella to start off. And there's our fish. Now, very important with any kind of flathead. Um, Jason, can you just point them spikes out, mate? Absolutely. And I might do that with pliers and a bit of safety, <laughs> but you've got a couple of spikes just in here. Yeah, and they really hurt, and you Absolutely. bleed, don't you? Yeah. Right there. And if you just push that flesh back, you'll just see them they hit you, and you'll just bleed and bleed. Yeah, exactly. So that's it. Look, that's a, a legal flathead, uh, a nice little fish. Uh, today we're not keeping any, we'll just uh, throw them back in. But look, all in all, it's a good start to our day. Beautiful Lake Macquarie, and hopefully you'll see some more big fish coming in. We'll put this little fella back in the water. And uh, I just run a bit of water through his gills. Uh, unclip that, and off he goes. All right, now I want to show you the rig I'm using. Uh, it's pretty important. Jason and myself were just talking about nuclear chicken. It's been around for a while, and uh, I was saying to Jace, when I was a kid, I used to use a lure called a Mr. Twister. It's a soft plastic, and it had twin tails or a single tail. A great little lure, but that was a green or orange color. Now, uh, as you can see here on this on this Berkeley, it's got a, uh, a green belly with a red top, so it's, it's a great attractant. What I'm using now is the jig head. Now, you can see that it's got that nice fluoro green color, but this is um, a quite a FinTech, it's an SS Minnow. Um, you can see it's got this little blade on the bottom. So what happens, when I rip that off the bottom, it flashes around and it, it just, look, today it, the water's not too bad. We've had a little bit of rain, but the water's still a bit clear. So, but this flashes around and it looks like a bait fish or just like a scale of a fish flashing around. So if that little bit of extra attractant can really make a difference of catching a fish or not catching a fish. So we're gonna cast it out again cast it out as far as we can, let it hit the bottom and a couple of whip whip back up and then let it go back down again. And most of the time, and 98% of the time you'll find it's on the rip up where you'll get the fish. So we'll get this back in the water and hopefully we'll see another flathead coming on board. So Jace, every time I come to Lake Macquarie, the fishing just seems to get better and better. Now, is this due to the commercial fishing being stopped? Look, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's probably around about 10 or 12 years ago now, Dave, that uh, commercial fishing finished and Really, it's, it's come to life, it really has. Um, we've seen a huge increase in school mulloway in particular, that was probably mm -hmm. the biggest recovery species we had. 
uh, flathead numbers have built and uh, just generally fishing has just uh, you know, improved out of sight. It's a beautiful waterway and hopefully today we'll get some of these species you've just talked about. So maybe I reckon we can get that line in the water and catch some fish. Time to do it. Oh yeah. Something that you should have in your tackle box all the time is a squid jig and Jason was bringing his plastic in and he's had this little fella come along and eat his soft plastic and you'll find a lot of the times if you've got like a, like a, oops, like a parrot bite out of your plastic, it's usually one of these but a bigger one like your, your green eye, um, your calamari, salmon calamari. So um, that's a little arrow squid. These are, this is probably the best bait you'll ever find for jewfish and kingfish around this area, Sydney Harbour and that's my main bait. Um, when I'm going for kings, I'll use something like that. Jase, we don't want these for uh, the whiting. We'll keep that because later on we're going to go for whiting. So another great bait for whiting is a squid. We'll cut that in fine little strips and put that on. But beautiful flesh. Now we've got a live well as well, so we might keep him alive. And uh, he's going to be beautiful later on. But uh, great little squid. Well, as you just seen, we've got a flathead and a little squid. Now it pays the prospect around. So we're gonna move locations to a place called Swansea Flats. This one's a flatty guys. Nice. Yep, sure is. About the same size as the last one, mate. Yeah, nice little fish. Here we go. Yes, Jake, flathead. Need to get a chicken again, Dave. He's got a chicken all the way down. With that uh, fluoro yellow chick head. Well, there you go. Another flatty on board, Jake. Right. Now this is this spot where we've got the sand flat and that nice big drop off and that was my third cast and uh, that nuclear chicken seems to be the colour so far this morning mate. Yeah look we've had three or four colour changes Dave, you've just persisted with the nuclear chicken. I've tried pearl white, smelt, uh, I've tried even the, the red and white, uh, to no avail so far. Mate that little tar wine grabbing that lure, it's mm. amazing the size of lure they will grab for the size of the fish. The very very aggressive uh, some of these fish and look it, it doesn't matter it, a lot of people would have thought years ago to use a five inch uh, jerk shad it would have been too large for a flathead as well that's right and, and nowadays they're even using sevens and getting some very very big fish on sevens so. that's right exactly all right we'll get this lure out and uh, as you can see it's hooked right in the corner jace it's it's uh it's the thing is if you hook them properly and get that set right, you always get them in the side of the mouth or the top of the mouth, don't you? You've just got to make sure once you get a hook up that you actually drive the hook in. Yep. Um, a lot of guys will just be very tentative and they'll let the drag do it, a little bit tighter drag and yep. really sink the hook. All right. Well, there's our beautiful flathead and, and that's a great fish. Some nice fillets on that if you do want to eat it. They're a great table fish. And, uh, but, you know, like I said before, today we're letting this fish go. So let's get this fish back in the water. Oh, there's our beautiful flathead. Where you go, little mate. See you later. No, oh, I think I've just... That's a little one, isn't it? Yep. Still got it? Still got a bit of weed. No, what is it? It's a squid, is it? Squid? Yeah. Look at oh, it, it's look three at squid. squid after it. Where's the, uh, where's the dig? Look at that, Jace. Free squid. I've hooked one. Just drop that squid jig down. Oh, he's straight onto it. And that's what I was paying. It, that's what I was saying. It pays to have a squid jig on board all the time because you don't know what you can come across. And no, no. there you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look, he will not let go of that plastic. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. So there's some more bait um, for the squid, uh, for our uh, whiting, sorry. And uh, we'll bring these in. Now he's finally let go. But uh, that's incredible. And you can see, 
I talked about before, little uh, bird beak kind of bites out of it. When you get your big southern calamari, they're, they're like a cocky bite out of it. So um, if you ever see that, you know you've got squid down there and it's worth putting a squid jig out. And even while you're fishing, if you're getting these kind of bites, you can still fish with a soft plastic, but just hang the jig out the back of the boat. All right, well there you go, free squid. Yeah, finally, broke the drought, Dave. Not a big, not a big fish, but... Mate, I was getting worried about you there for a minute. I know, I was never gonna live that down. Little fella. I'll give you that, it definitely is little. <laughs> it still counts. <laughs> now, different lure again, Jace. We'll get this one out, we'll show the lure. Um, I'm using more the uh, the gulp, the longer uh, minnow or jerk shad, and uh, you've got like a fish kind of pattern. Yeah, definitely, yeah, a fish shad, um, known as a fish candy, and it uh, seems to be quite effective. All right, we'll get him out and get him back in the water. Jason's using trebles, because he's a little bit older, so he doesn't have the reflexes of the young fellas, so um, you can hook him a lot easier. So there's your flatty, Jace. A little dusky, we'll just bang him through. Yep, get him back in there. Off he goes like a rocket. And we'll show you the lure. It looks like a, a small bait fish. And we've got a lot of white bait around at the moment and they're kind of that clear speckly colour. So it's probably a good so colour to use today. Uh, nice big paddle tail. So uh, this area here is a little bit more murkier. So you're going to put out vibrations. Yeah, definitely. And there was a lot of bait fish when we drifted through and we did see some very big fish on the sounder before. Yep. So look, anything's possible. It's getting a bit breezy, so we'll just give it a bit longer. Yep, no worries. Cut more cast and uh, Hopefully, we'll see that uh, big lizard come in. Because look, Swansea is famous for some big flathead, isn't it? Yeah, look, I mean, a lot of them certainly get up in Swansea Channel and that, but nowadays there's a lot of fish well over a metre. There's yeah. a couple this year caught uh, 1.2 or better. Yeah, the and, big and all fish. released, of course. Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll get some more lures in and uh, hopefully we'll snag a fish. You're on, Jay. Woo! Yep, sort of had to happen, David. We just, had, we just had to catch up. We're real even now, even Stephen. Mm. I won't say nothing until you get in the boat. Got to be in the boat first, that's exactly right. Well, yeah, about the average. In the net you go. Beautiful. Not a bad flathead, slowly getting a bit longer. Yeah, it's a long time coming. <laughs> Different lure again, Jay. Yeah, just a little uh, vibe now, a little rubber vibe. And as I say, today we've alternated with more colours than I can imagine, and different <laughs> shapes and sizes all around. So we've done the job. It's been a thinking day. Well, that's the thing. If the fish aren't biting, you got to change. You got to work for them. So you know, change different lures, change locations, and see what works. Absolutely. And like we've just come back across to the eastern side now because the wind was getting a bit up, and and a lure change straight away has got a good result for second cast. But it's funny, just a wind change, the fish can change too. Yeah, absolutely. Change their bite, just change what they're eating. Um, yeah. So, but it's a flathead. What? That's what we're after, mate. All right, Jace. Uh, this is a beautiful little fish. This is a male, and we're not far away from spawning season, are we? Yeah. Look, through December through to January, you'll see all the big females move into the shallows, particularly up through Swansea Channel, and a lot of males will travel with them. All right, mate. We'll get him back in the drink, so he can meet up with a healthy female. Absolutely. All right, off you go. So we've moved from the flat end now, we're changing our style, we're going for whiting, a great eating fish and a great little sports fish because they pull a lot of drag off, we use light, light tackle and they're lots of fun. Oh absolutely and, and look, the, the key is maximum six pound, generally uh, as low as three to four pound litres some days, five is probably the preferred. Yep. Um, mixed in along the sand plates here there's going to be lots of little brim as well. Now we're using uh, these little fellas, uh, these are tube worms. They are, and the beauty of a two tube worm is that it's farmed, so it's not dug from the wild. Okay. And what it does is it's taken the pressure off all the wild stock, particularly the blood worms that come out of Queensland. Um, without this farmed worm, I think that most uh, recreational anglers, um, really and certainly the Newcastle and Sydney region, would be certainly disappointed. They, they wouldn't get the opportunity to probably use them. No, not at all. Mate, it's, uh, it's the whiting challenge, so hopefully I can get a good whiting and hopefully you can get none. <laughs> I think a brim, we might put brim as bonus species uh, at the moment, so if we get a brim it's worth two whiting, how's that? <laughs> Alright, no worries at all. Alright, well let's get our lines out and go get some fish. Good luck mate. <laughs> mm, okay, I've got two, in, two fish happening at the same time here. 
So uh, Dave's up the front. He yep. uh, is not really happening at all. So it looks like this is a pretty good one there. I've got that one first up. Let's just see how we got that. We'll let that one play around at the back of the boat. Dave, would you like to help? No, I'm fine, no, that's mate. okay. That'll leave me two up. <laughs> Still brim. That's a lip hook. Well done, Joe. They're all probably just 25s, a lot of 23s. So um, great to see, and that's evidence that the system's coming back. I'll pop him back in. Away he goes. All right, now I finally got my gear ready, and uh, uh, as you can see, the outfits I'm using are only small. Your typical brim outfit, they yeah, two to four kilo. You can go lighter, like a one to three kilo. Um, the soles would do a great job. I'm getting a bit of line taken off here at the moment, so I think I've got a fish on. I might just have to grab that just to be safe. Yep, we've definitely got some line coming off. Now, Jason's using bait runners. Um, if you don't have a bait runner, there's a couple of different techniques you can do. Uh, you can back the drag right off really light, or you can do what I'm doing here and letting the, uh, leaving the bail arm open and letting the line run off. And as you can see there, the line's running off at its, by the fish, so the fish is pulling it off. Now I'm just giving him a little bit of time. It's all slow motion when it comes to this style of fishing. I'm gonna close this bail arm very shortly and hopefully I can hook up to, hopefully be the first whiting uh, of the day. There we go, and we're on. So just as simple as that, we've got light drags. We're only using five pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. Now this feels like maybe a small brim. The only downside when you're using an open bail arm, you've just got to keep an eye on your line so you don't, get, uh, you don't lose too much line. You've got to see what it's doing. Uh, you can also wrap an elastic band around, around your handle or your, your rod and stick the line underneath and you, once it pulls out, you know you've got a fish on. But some of these whiting, they can pull really hard, don't they, Jace? Oh, for sure. You get some really good whiting. Like that, there you go this time of year, that could be a, a whiting. You reckon it might be? I thought it might have been a brim, but I don't know yet. Uh, he looks like he's got a bit of length about him. I'll bring him over, bring him over. Beautiful, that's a nice whiting, Jace. My word, that's uh... That there is probably 40 centimetres. That's getting very Beautiful, close. Beautiful, clean fish. Jace, that is one great whiting. Absolutely. That's that's basically what we've come for. As I say, that's, and you can just see, look, the benefit of a, a, a small hook. Uh, that's only a number 10. And uh, that's, I'll let you hold it, mate. That's a, that's that's a very nice. good fish. Uh, that would be easily 40 centimetres. And that's typical of the size of the whiting that you'll get on this Swansea Flats area here, um, up between the islands. Uh, and it's a summer species, and you know, you've got a prawn run happening in probably about a week and a half's time, Dave. They're gathering in numbers. Yeah, these are a beautiful eating fish as well. And, mate, I'm, I'm going to take this fish home because it's too good a fish uh, to let go. Oh, eating, eating quality's uh, perfect on this sort of fish, so um, no, I, I don't think anyone's going to knock you for that. <laughs> you got a double, Jay. Mate, I'd, like to see you. <laughs> I'd like to see you wind that, that bait. one. Oh, I'm going to do this easily. Oh. Uh, oh, yep, this is going to be a challenge in itself. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're good at it? I don't know. Do you want the net, mate? No, uh, no, it's only a little whiting. I'll flick him in. Get him out of the way for the second. I just want to see what this is. Bigger fish, you think? Oh, he took a fair bit of line running over there onto that bank, so he could be, a, he could be one of those... Bonus species again, maybe. Yeah, you can see that beautiful silver on it. Not big. Still it's a fish, a, mate. Yeah, definitely. As I say, swallow the hook again. We're just going to nick that line and we're going to get him back into the water. I'll tell you what, we've only been here for a short time and there's some fantastic fishing. Um, you know, some whiting, some great brim, and it's simple, simple fishing. And that's what I like, just back to the basics. Another little one. 
Well, a little fish this one. Uh, one again, Jake. Yeah, look, he it was very, very lazy on the tag. He just tore off the side here. For a minute there, I thought it was a stingray, but it's just he's just free swimming up towards the boat. Oh, he's a nice fish. Oh, that's good. I'll jump in there. Yep, another nice whiting. It's not the stingray that's sitting there. No, I did <laughs> discount that one. I, I, I was starting to feel the pressure then. <laughs> Anytime. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, mate. Thank you, Dave. Are you on oh, again? Oh, yeah, on again, Dave. Oh, good on you, bud. I heard that little bit of drag peeling off. I think this is another whiting, and I'm hoping he'd be the same size as that guy. Yeah, that's not a bad fish. Beautiful health for you, Whitey. Can you take this one home? Yeah, look, let's see if we've got a few in there now, so that'll be nice. All right, we'll get him out of the way, let you fight that. Yep, little brim. Just, just lick. And we're in your case. Well, there you know, mate, uh, a little brim to finish the show off. What a fantastic day, mate. I have to thank you. As always, you always get me the great fish. Oh, it was a really good day. Weather was fantastic. Had to work a little bit hard for the fish, but it come good in the end. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll see you next week somewhere around Australia. That water makes it clear to see That vision's just like therapy The worries of the world all just drift away when I'm out here fishing for the day. So if I hook a big one or I hook a small one, I'm hooked on fishing again.